What's up guys, it's your Flight Sim CFI here, also known as Mr. Bergsy. Here to show you a few things about IFR flying, the basics of it. We're going to take a beautiful flight from Collingwood Airport in Ontario, Canada, uh, to Muskoka Airport, another beautiful airport uh, in the heart of cottage country. And we're going to do a uh, simple IFR departure out of Collingwood. And then we're going to fly an RNAV approach into Muskoka and we'll land over there. So it should be a short flight, about a half an hour. Um, however, there's gonna be a lot of information. I'm gonna set this up strictly for the beginner for IFR flying. So if you're getting into flight sim and you wanna be able to uh, fly an IFR flight plan and you wanna be able to fly an, an RNAV approach, then this is the, great, the best video for you. Uh, I'm not gonna do any ATC communications today. We're gonna start with this. And then next video, we'll add in the ATC communications. So we want to walk before we run. And IFR flying, there's a lot going on. Uh, so it's really important to get the basics, and then we can start adding things in. So let's get going on the ground at Collingwood. Uh, again, it's going to be about a 30-minute flight. I hope you get something from this. I, I think you will. And here we go. All right, guys, here we are in the cockpit uh, Dimestar DA40. Uh, this is the NG model uh, with the G1000. This is the plane that I fly uh, in real life. And we're on the ground in Collingwood, uh, runway 31. Collingwood is uh, Charlie November Yankee 3. And right now, we currently have a flight plan set up from Collingwood Airport to Muskoka. And it's just direct. That's what that line is showing. That's just a direct line to our airport and then we can zoom out here and you can see that is our path for today. Now going direct to it is great and that is how we would start this flight. Um, however, we're doing this uncontrolled. We're going to be as, as far ahead as possible. So what we want to do is we want to set up our approach. Now because we're just flying in uh, in clear skies, standard pressure day, um, we, we can pick any, any runway we want, no winds. And so what we're going to do is we're going to go down into this right hand corner here and hit procedures. So this little button here will uh, allow us to select our approach. So we're going to select it, we're not going to activate it yet because that's not proper procedure. Uh, we would normally activate it once we've been cleared for that approach. Uh, so let's select it. RNAV runway 36, we'll take that, it's the quickest one for us. So we enter. And the next thing that we gotta do is go down here. And we wanna select our transition. Now you look at the chart here. And as you can see, since we are coming from the southwest, we want the most southwesterly um, uh, transition point to start our RNAV approach. Now, if we were to pick the one on the east side, it wouldn't make as much sense because we would have to deviate around it. And when we're IFR flying or commercially flying, we want to take the most efficient and effective route. We want to spend less time in the air, which is less gas, which is less cost, right? So the transition that we want to take is Putux. So we select that and we hit enter. And then we can go down and we can enter the minimums as well. Eh, Flight Sim 2020 doesn't let you. <laughs> okay, so we'll leave it at this. Okay, so, Putex. And then we come down to the bottom here. And we have, so this here will show us our sequence. So we can verify that. Putex, Sassos, Sassos, uh, IGSIM, um, Ig and then our runway tw uh, 36, 36. Now we have two options, load and activate, okay? So loading just puts it into the database, we can activate it later. Activate would be to actually fly that right now. So we're just gonna load it at first. So we enter, and here we go. So it, so you can see our flight plan, if Flight Sim 2020 does this properly, should not change. Like It should be the exact same. It's all, there we go, let's get rid of that. Okay, so we zoom out. See how it loaded in there? That's not how it would work in real life. You load it, it would not show there, activate it, and it would do this. 
We're going to stick with it. There's bugs and flights in 2020. It's actually probably the most awful IFR platform out there. However, graphically, it looks stunning. And uh, so that's why I thought we'd use this for today. Okay, so everything is set up. Now with IFR flying, a lot of it is going to be done um, on autopilot. So I am going to set up the autopilot. Uh, I do have another video. If you aren't unsure of how to set up a, an autopilot, check out that other video. I'll link it above. And we'll be able to discuss the things along the way. So now, second thing is our altitude. Our altitude that we are going to file for today uh, needs to be an even number because we're going east. Um, and because it's IFR, we remain on the thousands. So we could pick 3,000, which is technically low for a cruising altitude uh, because it sh cruising altitude starts 3,000 feet above above ground level. We're at 730, so it should start at 5,000 for us. But but you'll get the you get the point. 3,000, 5,000, 7,000, 9,000, 11,000, etc., etc. That's how we would select going east. Okay. Now you say, what if we are flying east but our arrivals on the west? Like, like, let's say we're flying over here to Wyerton. Um, it always is the point of destination, which is where you're going to choose the uh, the altitude. So for today, if our destination was Wyerton to the west, but we were flying out um, to this Y-E-E-V-O-R first, we would still file um, a, an even number altitude. So 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, etc. So for today, let's go 5,000. So we'll come down here, we'll set our altitude because we want to be as set up as possible before we start rolling. We want to click our heading button, that'll center our bug. And we can even go and click our vertical speed, set that this airplane climbs very nice at five, 500 feet per minute. Okay. And then that's it. We're set up now. This will capture our altitude once we get there. Autopilot's not engaged right now, but we can see up here in our strip that our vertical speed is set. We can click our heading mode. So now it will capture heading. We're good. All right. Another thing that we can check down here on our compass, uh, this is, we can see here that it's on GPS, okay? So if we click this CDI button, you can see this is picking up our VOR, so what's programmed into our nav. Nav 1. VOR 2 would be our Nav 2. And GPS is what's in our GPS here on the right. So this is all perfect. Okay, so landing lights on, position lights on, strobe light is on. We are good to go. All right. Park and brake will come off. And we'll take off and start this flight. So full throttle, right rudder. We are looking at airspeeds alive. And 50, 50 knots. 60 knots. Rotate. Allow the aircraft to go off the ground. Tap the brakes. And we'll send, get the view looking a little bit better here for you guys. down and bring that up to 70 knots on the climb okay 900 so we're 300 or 200 feet AGL we can go flaps up get us a little more airspeed we're gonna engage our autopilot and we can just let it fly at this point so once we get to circuit altitude, because we can play this out, this is an uncontrolled airport, okay? So let's play it out as an uncontrolled airport. We've just taken off. We've got to fly outside of circuit altitude, so that's 1,000 feet AGL. So at 1,700 feet, we can, we can depart the circuit and go, now that is on a VFR day. Now if it was an IFR day and uh, we had our clearance, we could technically take off and depart right away at 400 feet make our turn. Um, as as per the chart for this air, airport. However, 
best practice, depart at circuit altitude, then continue on route. So as you can see, we're getting up 90 knots and climbing. We can make expedite our climb a little bit. We're getting lots of power here. And we'll, so we'll go, we'll nose up. That's 600 feet per minute, that's good. Back off a little bit of power here. About 1400. Now while we're climbing here, we're looking, see this needle here is no longer in line. That's because we're not in line with the GPS track here, okay? But that's fine, that's no big deal. Now, you could click nav, and that will spin around and start doing it. Now, let me just pull down the desktop audio here, guys, so it's a little bit better. A little quieter there, all right. So 1700, okay, so if I click nav, we could turn left, we could turn right, we don't know. We have our best judgment that we'd say, okay, it should turn to the right, but it might turn left, and we don't want that. So what do we do? We're in heading mode, okay? We want to make that turn to the right. We control the airplane. Fly the airplane. Don't let the autopilot fly the airplane, right? Show what you want to do. We want to make that turn to the right. Turn to the right with the heading. Once we get to a good intercept course, so which we know by looking at this GPS, which side, and, and, and think about this, and I'll give you a second, where is the track relative to where we currently are? Okay, where is the track relative to, which way do we gotta turn to intercept this track and head to our approach into Muskoka? Is it to the left of us, or is it to the right of us? I'll give you a second here to think about it. So if you thought it was on the right of us, you're right, because this this here is showing that the track is on our right. So we're going to turn the heading indicator. Normally on inbound, we'd go 90 degrees to intercept. We don't need to worry about that too much, but let's get out of 45, okay? And all the while, we're still monitoring. We're at a 90 knot climb. Great. 600 feet per minute. Great. RPM's a little high, but this has a FADEX system, so it's controlling that on its own. Once we see this come alive and start moving in, we'll switch it over to nav mode. That's why we got this onto GPS. Right when we click nav mode, it will capture this for us. It'll do everything that we need. Okay, passing through 3,000 for 5,000. See when this comes alive, it'll show us here that our track we're off by three nautical miles. But we're coming in. See the beautiful water here. Here's a fun fact: this this beach all along here, largest freshwater beach in the world, Wasaga Beach. It's beautiful. Now ask yourself again, why do we fly 5,000 feet? What's the reason for that? We said it earlier, but these are things that we have to remember and we want to be proficient at. Okay, so now we're seeing that the needle's coming alive here. We can activate our nav mode. And you can see our aircraft will now roll to the left. We knew it would roll to the left because we need to make that left-hand turn to line up with, um, with our track here. Now it'll stop a little bit early, and it'll do just a short, uh, a very shallow intercept. That's fine. And always good, good practice, guys. Click this heading. If you click on it, when the, the little pointer comes up, click on it. That will center your heading indicator. See how it's centered here? All right, it could be anywhere. I'll move it out. We click it, it centers. Good practice. Because if something were to ever go wrong, let's say your GPS went squirrely um, and your aircraft started turning left and you didn't want it to turn left, or right and you didn't want it to turn right, um, or you didn't realize there was restricted airspace and you gotta, you gotta deviate, right? Now if I click heading mode, I'll just hold heading. I'll hold this heading, it's set there, and then I can change it. Now I could always disconnect it um, and, and continue. Now, 
on the real aircraft you'll see here as well we have the CWS I, I, I can actually just hold that go where I want fly where I want let go autopilot will kick back up but we don't have that program right here so we're not gonna worry about that So we're at 3,400, or 4,400, sorry, for 5,000. So we're just coming up. So the reason why we want to watch that, we want to make sure that we're not going to go past 5,000. We're cleared at 5,000. That's what air traffic control has assigned us. We stop there. We don't go above. We don't go below. And that is because they are responsible for traffic avoidance, terrain avoidance, all of that, right? So if they say 5,000, we go 5,000. So now you can see we've captured our GPS route. And we're going to fly to uh, Putix, which is our initial approach fix for our RNAV into Muskoka. So let's fast forward ahead here. And once we get to a few minutes out from Putix, we'll start going again. All right, all welcome back. So now we're about five nautical miles, or it's exactly five miles uh, from Putux. Now we'd be making our calls. Now I did change one thing up, guys. We now have a solid layer of clouds. Real life are flying. Let's actually see if we can... Uh, uh, coverage, yeah. Yeah, that's good. I like it. So... Now we're going to have to fly through the clouds to get down to the ground. So it's a little more real. A little more real. So if you were looking at the chart that I have up here, and I'll put it up again, we want to look at what our altitude is supposed to be at between Sassos and Ixim and at Putex. So Putex is our next, our, our first fix. So you can see it here. So it says between, it recommends between Sassos and Ixim 2,500 feet. So let's get down to 2,500 feet. We want to get down there. We want to, that's, that's a safe altitude, 2,500. So we set that up on here. So you can see 2,500. And we want to put our vertical speed on and we want to um, descend. And we'll go to 600 and we want to drop that throttle. Manage our speed. Okay. We want to, our, our approach speed uh, is going to be about 90 knots, um, and then 80 knots when we're on final, and then 70 knots uh, will be our uh, VREF speed. Okay, we can be more precise and do our calculations, but uh, we don't need to worry about that right now. So let's descend, let's get down. So as you can see on the chart, the recommended is 2500, but... We could decide, we could pick really any altitude we want. We could look up here at the distance uh, from the runway, and we can use our DME, and see it says 4,900 at 9.8 miles back. We could use that. 9.8 miles back would be Sassos. We could stay at 4,000 and not fly it um, down to 2,500, level off, and then descend at exit. That's totally up to us. That's our choice, okay? However, we're going to fly the prescribed route. So Sassos, uh, we want to get down to 2,500 feet. Okay, so we're coming up to Putix. We're at uh, 4,000 feet. I want to fly to that shelf. Now, as you can see below the 2,500, see that 16, 1,600 feet? That's the hard deck. That's the floor. Pretend that's the ground. It's not the ground, but that's your minimums. If you go below that, you're unprotected. It's actually illegal, so to speak. So we do not fly below 1,600 feet. There's a nice gap there between 1,600 and 2,500. Now, at other places, some other airports, you'll see 1,600 is the, min is the floor, and 1,600 is the prescribed. That gives you no minimum. You go to 1599, you're breaking cars in Canada um, or FARS um, in, in the States, it, which it, there's no buffer. Like things happen. Like, you get a gust of wind, you go down. You don't want that. So we would go to a prescribed, a higher route, right? We, we would select a higher route. So now we're coming up here to Sassos. What do we have to be at at Sassos? Sassos says we could be at 4,000, but we can be as low as 1,600. We don't want that, but we've got 2,500. So we still got lots of time to get down 1,000 more feet. Right? We're good. Everything's good. 
aircraft setup. We can't see anything. Well, we can kind of see the ground. It's not, uh, it's just fog, but that's okay. We're IFR flying, right? So 3,300, we got that. Everything is set up perfectly. We're good. Now, one thing we got to remember, guys, when we level off at 2,500 feet, what's going to happen? We lowered our throttle down. We're at 23% right now load. We're going to want that to be increased. So just before, so remember in basic flying, okay? So if we want to go down, power, attitude, trim, okay? If we want to go up, then we want to go attitude, power trim so since we're descending how are we going to come out of that descent okay how are we going to come out of the descent when we are nose down we want to level out and keep a good airspeed if you said power attitude trim or pat like pat the dog then you're right so you, you don't reverse the steps in the sense where uh since we went down power attitude trim then we go add to power trim no keep the same thing so power attitude trim is how we went down now how we level off, power, attitude, trim. Okay. So we're coming up to 2,500, we're at 2,690. We can see that the 2,500 is flashing, so the autopilot is going to capture it. It understands what's going on. And once we get to about 50 feet, I'm gonna slowly bring up that, uh, 50 feet above, above. So coming up here, I'm gonna slowly start increasing the throttle. 60% is our cruise. But we're going to go down to 50% because we want to stay at 90 knots. Okay, 90 knots is our approach. We're now making that left-hand turn. The left-hand turn, we're above Sassos. Igsem will be our final approach fix, our final approach waypoint. Okay? And that Igsem, that's when we're going to start our descent into, uh, in, into Muskoka. From here, our, uh, what we'll do is we'll set up our minimums up here in our altitude, okay? And we'll just continue flying it right down. Minimums here is 1420. If you see here in LNAV, it's 1420 above sea level or 500 feet above ground, okay? And we need a mile and a half visibility. These are all the things that make this approach legal and able to be uh, carried out, okay? So we're 3.9 miles from Ixum. You can see we're crabbing a little bit here. There's supposed to be no wind, but that's okay. As long as it keeps us on track, then we're okay. We can see the ground. That's pretty, pretty bad visibility. Oh, our lights went off. Let's get those back on. So how about we hand fly this down for make some, okay? Actually, heck, let's do it now. Let's get ready. 2.9 miles out. Autopilot's coming off. Okay, we have our power set. Now, it's always good to practice hand flying in IFR conditions. In real life, it's very weird. It is a very weird feeling when you first, when you first start it. So hold 2500 we don't want to go below we can legally but we don't want to our distance right now to uh, Ixim is two miles and all along this time we would be making radio calls but like I said we are not going to focus on radio today and what runway are we going into we're going into uh, it was runway uh, 36 so 36 would be a heading of north set our heading bug okay so theoretically, we're going in the right direction for this runway. We're lined up with our GPS. Everything should be good. Okay, 1.3 miles from Ixum. Okay. And we'll trim it out a bit. I'm, I'm pulling back a little bit. Like, see, you can see I have to pull back to, to maintain. Now, sorry, but if you're seeing everything kind of being a little glitchy on the G1000 there, that's a Microsoft Flight Sim bug. If you look outside, everything's smooth. You look in this, and it's it's jittery. So I do apologize for that, but there's uh, absolutely nothing I can do about it. Um, so our heading's a little bit off. Let's correct it. We're still on track. That's fine. We're 0.3 miles uh, from Ixum. Let's just correct this here. 
And now we're at Igson, we can start that descent. So power, our attitude. We want to maintain that 90 knots and we want to descend. Okay, so we'll continue our descent down. 90 knots seems to be creeping up a little, so nose back just a touch. Our next checkpoint here is going to be at uh, three miles out. We're gonna do at three miles out, 1920. We can also see the little uh, the little diamond there, right? So it's saying that we're a little low. So let's let's just follow the diamond. Okay. And continue on down. Now, flaps. We can set one notch flaps. We're in the zone. We're lined up. That'll bring us down to 80 knots. We want 80 knots. Short sure, final, we want 70 knots, okay? All these things are so important for having a nice, perfect landing, okay? So we're 80 knots. 1920, three miles out. Nailed it, okay? Perfect. Pretty much couldn't be any better than that, okay? So let's continue. Now, before we land, when, what do we have to... Our missed approach uh, point is the runway, as per the chart. So as long as we have the runway before we get to the runway and before we hit our 1420, then we're good. We have the runway now. We're good. We can continue this approach. Okay, so let's set our view up to what we want. We're at 80 knots. We're, we're a little below path, so let's add some throttle. Remember, throttle controls your altitude, pitch controls your airspeed. Remember that. That's big. We'll trim it out. I've got a little bit more back pressure than I would like, so we'll trim it out. That's a little bit better of a view. So again, we're still a little bit, just a little bit low. So here, we're coming up to final, or we're coming up to shore final. We want to check our gas. Our gas is good. Uh, our undercarriage, we have no, no retractable gear, so that's good. Mixture, FADEX system, no mixture, but mixture would be full, prop full, um, all that, but it's FADEX system, it does it all for you. Okay. And we just continue on. This is a great approach right now. We're right on glide slope. We have our runway. Okay. We're on the right heading. 3-6. We're clear for 3-6. Even though we flew that approach, always confirm. We're on the right runway. Yeah. Okay. We're now coming up to short final. Throttles can come down because what do we want to get to between 70 and 80 knots? Last notch of flaps comes in. Our airspeed's coming down. Okay. Okay, now we're now we're pretty much pasted on 70 knots. We want to keep slow the descent down. Slow the descent down. We're at a good angle here. This will be a nice landing. So we're just below 70 knots. That's okay. We got lots of room before stall speed here. Lots of room. Make sure we get back to that center line. We're right on glide slope. Hold it. Keep the throttle. We can start slowly closing out the throttle. Slowly going into our flare, a little, little bit of throttle to just slow down the descent rate. And come down, there we go. Throttle's down, or closed. Nose comes down. And we can let it roll out. So there we go. We just did an IFR flight from Collingwood to Muskoka with an RNAV approach in runway 36. It was all good. Easy peasy. There's a lot going on, I understand that. But that's why it's so important to practice these small little flights like this before jumping in an airline. Too many people are hopping on VAT, SIM, and Pilot Edge and just don't have the basics. So let's learn the basics. This is part one. Next, we'll throw in some air traffic control, okay? Then we can talk about things like holds. You know, here, we'll stop this aircraft here. A little aerodynamic braking, flaps come up, pull, black, pull back, full brakes. There we go, we're stopped here on the runway. Okay, park and brake, we can set. Okay. 
And I took out everything. I took off the checklist. We're not following the checklist, which you should, but we're, we're not following that. We're just keeping it simple, just doing basic IFR stuff. So if you like this, smash the like button, subscribe for more. This is part one of a multi-part series. Uh, we're gonna go through all the IFR. We're also gonna come out with just a very basic beginner course as well. Uh, that is showing the basics of flying. We're gonna go right through a private license. Like, it's pretty cool. We're gonna go right through a private, a private pilot's license, uh, and it's pretty much standard between Canada and the United States and other parts of the world as well. Uh, we're gonna go through everything, the basics. You know, the in-game tutorials are great, it's a little different when you get actually taught by a CFI, so. Anyways, hope you guys enjoyed that. Remember, hit the like button, share, and comment. And we'll see you on the next one.